a question I get a lot about Windows 8 customization and things like that is about the start menu. At the moment, I'm on a fresh Windows 8.1 install. I don't even have 8.1 update 1 that I mentioned in a previous version installed just yet. Um, but I just have the default Metro start menu. In my original OBS tutorial, however, I had a more Windows 7-esque start menu and it was called Pokey. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your own Windows 7-like start menu inside Windows 8. For the purposes of this tutorial and this video, I will be showing you how to set up and use Classic Shell. Classic Shell is a free download, free software to get your classic looking start menu back up and running because honestly there's not a whole lot of use for the Windows 8 Metro menu especially once you get update 1 installed and so no reason not to go ahead and replace that little start menu. As you can see on their website here classicshell.net which I will put in the description you can go Windows XP mode where you just have one column super classic mode. You can go Windows Vista mode with two columns. Or you can go Windows 7 mode, which is two columns but a bit more enhanced and a bit more up to date. In this video I will be using the Windows 7 mode, although I'm honestly really tempted to go to Classic and do the Windows XP mode, but I'm not going to. If you know anyone that use, used to use Windows XP and they're switching to Windows 8 and you want to help them get set up and a bit more comfortable with their Windows 8 like Windows XP was, set them up a Windows XP start menu and you... <laughs> There's no reason they can't use Windows 8 at that point. And they even have Classic Internet Explorer available if you like. However, I don't recommend using Internet Explorer ever, especially since at the moment there's a lot of really bad um, vulnerabilities to it at the moment, and they're suggesting not you like they're even suggesting to just not use it. So go ahead and go to their all downloads, download Classic Shell 4.1.0 for your language. Select your download folder, click save, it'll download really quick. Run the installer. And I am installing it here because I'm going to be using it. Tell it to run, and then it's going to load some stuff. As all installers typically do, compute space requirements, see if you have enough disk space to install it, which, if I check, obviously I do. I have plenty of space. I do not have as much SSD space as I used to because mine died, but I have plenty of space. If you want to know how to get my tabbed file browser, check another video. I will have that in the description as well. Welcome to Classic Shell Setup. Click Next. Click Accept. Click Next. It's going to install it to your C menu. And here's where it gives you a bunch of options. You got Classic Explorer, Start Menu, IE, and Shell Update. I do not want IE, and I do not want Classic Explorer. If you want those things, you can install them. If you just want the Start Menu, or you want Start Menu and Explorer, make sure you select your options as such, as that will change your default Explorer. I'm really enjoying using Clover, that's what I'm going to stick with, but I will get the Start Menu and just the Updater. Click Next. Click install, it'll pop up if you can even see this on screen. A user account control warning, you could not see that. It pops up a user account control warning asking you if are you sure you want to install this, just tell it yes. Uncheck view readme file unless you want to read the readme file and click finish. Now when we click the start button, it's going to open up your settings for classic start menu. Here you get to choose your options. And there's a check mark to show all the settings so you may want to pop that up all right so we're gonna go with the Windows 7 style all right on this menu you have the option to replace your start button with a custom start button if you wish by default it leaves it at the Windows 8 start button which I personally prefer and I apologize for the weird cut I am trying to do this with a puppy in my lap and she's not always the most cooperative all right. controls you can do all sorts of Control changes for when you click on it, when you shift click it, for example, it by default goes to the Windows start screen. If you hit the Windows key, it'll change it to the win to the classic start menu. Middle click can also go to Windows start screen. 
Um, if you hover, it will open nothing. If you right click, it'll open the Windows X menu, etc. If you choose to do so. Rolling over to the main menu tab, we have a few options for your all programs menu. You have the cascading sub menu, which is kind of similar to the Vista style, I would say. And then you have options to choose what goes inside your main menu. You can choose show folders first, show metro apps to open it automatically instead of having the little start thing. I'm not going to have it open automatically just because I like having things pinned to the start menu. But you can show folders first, which would be useful. Um, so if we open it up here, as you can see, it's already looking very much like the Windows 7 menu, which I really like. Um, you can hide app shortcuts. I'm going to uncheck that. Pin programs folder. You can use the start menu folder. Uh, the pin programs will be stored in the system start menu folder or its own pin folder. I'm going to use my own pin folder because it'll just keep them separate in case I do go to the Windows 8 Metro menu. That way they don't just all get pinned and you have a messy Metro menu if you ever actually use it. You can set a max to your most recent programs. That's not going to be a big deal for me. Show them on top. I definitely don't want that. You want the pinned programs to show on top here. Shortcuts for the recent programs. Hidden digits, digits, normal shortcuts. Enable jump list. Definitely want jump list to stay enabled. Those are basically those things. When you drag up on the taskbar list, you get the, the option for that program. All right. Keyboard shortcuts. You can change a little bit. Um, and then you have what the shutdown command does. Obviously, for me, it just shuts. I'm going to have it to just shut down. You can also. Enable it to show during remote sessions, why not? Enable hybrid shutdown. Definitely want this unchecked. This apparently actually does damage your SSD. And people, well, people are alleging that that's what killed my SSD and I'm, I tend to believe that may be part of it, so I'm just keeping it unchecked. If you're running off a hard drive, you can leave it checked, like if you're on a laptop. If you're using a solid state drive, I would do some research and kind of consider your options with hybrid shutdown. I am leaving it disabled for me personally. That doesn't necessarily need to affect what you do. There are a lot of options for numbers for how many, how big things are, how many documents and stuff there are shown. I'm not going to screw with too much. Categories view for the control panel. I do want reverse the order of the main menu, sort the main menu only the first time. Go over to the general behavior tab. Start automatically for this user. Yes. Highlight newly installed programs. No, I never like that. Check for windows updates on shutdown. Sure. I'll leave that enabled. Enable drag and drop, heck yeah. Definitely want multiple columns. Expand folder shortcuts, sure. Enable accessibility features, why not? Show next to the taskbar when it's vertical. So basically, here, watch this. That's not what I wanted. If you unlock your taskbar, so if you keep your taskbar on like the side or something, you can tell it to be basically a separate taskbar. I don't really, if I hit, I don't think it's going to apply it immediately. But basically it's going to put it next to the taskbar instead of on the taskbar. I don't really like that at all and I don't keep mine vertical so no reason for that. On Windows 8 it'd be kind of silly to keep your taskbar vertical since you actually do things on the side of your screen here. I don't think that would make much sense in my opinion. Pre-catch icons, delay loading of icons, report skin errors. Search box, access normally, selected by default so that means when you hit start you can automatically start typing to search stuff which is important. Or you can disable it if you want. Track frequency of use of the search box, enable autocomplete, blah blah blah. Lots of options there. Menu look. Lots of options here to enable arrow glass, to override the color, enable sm font smoothing, etc. Just gonna kinda leave all that the same. Here you can change your skin. You can change it to classic skin, which is gonna look very Windows XP, very Spartan. Tell it to do small icons, then it gets even smaller. Um, you can tell it to do Windows 8, which is how it looks now, kind of Windows 7, 8-ish. Tell it to do small icons, which will save more space. I kind of like that. Large font. It's going to make things a bit bigger. Ironically, I kind of like that with the small icons. Reduce glass color. Eh. Disable glass transparency. No. Black text on glass. Black light. You know, a couple different skin options. Then you have Windows Arrow, 
which looks very Windows Vista-esque, which I do not like at all. So we're going to be Windows 8 with small icons and large font. Up here, Start Button tab. Replace the Start Button. That's when you do all the Start Button customization. We're not going to mess with it. Windows 8.1 settings, skip the Metro screen. So basically when you turn on the computer, it's going to go straight to your desktop. You can disable active corners. I do not wish to do that. The only one it's going to disable is the start screen. So when you hover down here, it's not going to take you to the Windows 8 start screen. It's going to load Classic Shell. Disable trans taskbar transparency. I, I like the transparency. Well, I'm going to enable it and see how I think about it. Open start screen on monitor with mouse. Shift plus Windows will open the start screen. Oh, so if you use Shift and the Windows key on your keyboard, it will make sure it opens the start screen on the same monitor that your mouse is on. Not really necessary in my opinion, and I don't use the Windows key that much. Here you get your normal options of what actually shows up on your start menu here. So you have user files, documents, pictures, music. I'm going to also add downloads and home group. I do not use the game menu, do not use favorites, don't really want recent items, definitely want this PC, I do want network, and you have control panel, devices and printers, default programs, do not want help, do not want run, definitely want. You can even add an extra app or option for metro apps, I'll go ahead and do that. Then context menu, enable right click menu, cascading right click menu. Basically, enable custom right clicking here. And you can change ex using Windows Explorer, and then you can change the sounds and the language. So I think I have everything set up how I would like it. I'm going to hit OK. As you can see, I disabled the taskbar transparency, and it got a lot brighter. I actually do not like it. So just simply right click it to go to settings. Then I'm going to go back here to skin, I believe. No. Where was that at? That was at... It was under Windows 8.1 settings, uncheck, disable transfer prints, transparency. Looks back like everything else. So now we have a Windows 7, Windows XP-esque start menu. It even has our downloads folder and our user folder. And it still opens in Clover and then you can search programs. It's going to keep track of your most recently opened programs and you can pin programs to it just like the old school start menu. Hope you, and then you have our Metro Apps menu here if you wish. Hope you did enjoy the video, guys. As always, thank you very much for watching. Hope this helps some of you out for getting Start Menu set up, and I will see you all later.